Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I am so happy to meet you again in this amazing project, Critical Care Eco. A lot of lessons. Really, you will learn a lot of lessons here and new lessons. Let us see. I was asked to see a 72-year-old male patient in the medical ward. He is known case of ischemic heart disease, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, who was recently admitted because of community acquired pneumonia. He received broad coverage antibiotic and IV fluids in the medical ward. He was, when I saw the patient, he was sleepy, but arousable with verbal stimuli. Hemodynamically heart rate 100 to 120 per minute AF, Blood pressure 110 over 60. He was in respiratory stress with respiratory rate 35 per minute, O2 saturation 88 on 10 liter non breathing mask. Heart AF, chest basal crackle, bilateral basal crackle, abdomen soft legs. We, we decided to intubate the patient because he was in respiratory stress. While preparing for intubation, critical care ultrasound was done. As you all of you know now, we start by inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava <coughs> is in the full side. You are talking about almost two centimeter and non collapsing. This is an artifact. Uh, you are talking about CVB around 10 seconds hard. We'll start by four chamber view. As you see here, this is a four chamber view. This is the left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle, tricuspid valve, mitral valve. As you see here, visual assessment of ejection fraction, you are talking about, in this view, you are talking about 45, 50%. Left ventricle is not dilated. And wall motion abnormality, as you see here, lateral wall is moving. But as you see here, there is hypokinesia, the sickness here in the apical part of the septum, of the anterior septum, is not sinking probably. And as you see here in the basal septum, there is ecogenic basal septum and aneurysmal here and do not uh, seeking at all. That means it's akinetic basal septum. <clears throat> and as you see here, as long as you are not seeing the aorta, you are talking about the inferior septum. Okay. So as you see here, the problem is the inferior septum, hypokinesia in the apical part, but in the basal part, akinesia and aneurysmal part. Okay. Let us see uh, color. You see here, this is a color fired in the mitral valve. You are seeing moderate mitral regurg here. And the direction of mitral regurg is towards the posterior leaflet. That means you are talking about ischemic pathology. We'll, we'll clarify this in um, a moment. Okay. And the ejection fraction, you are talking about uh, 50%. Visual assessment. Uh, long axis parasternal view. This is the right ventricle, septum, left ventricle, aorta, left atrium, and the mitral valve. <clears throat> this is a short axis view, and there is also long axis view, but still. Long axis view, contractility is good, yeah, mild hypokinesia in lateral, and good contraction here. And if you see the short axis, the inferior is badly contracting, but as long as uh, anterior lateral is okay. Let us see other view. In this view, it's very important if you see, if, if you suspect ischemic mitral regurg, it's better to get this uh, view, uh, two chamber view, uh, which revealing clearly the anterior wall, which is contracting very well, and the inferior wall. As you see here, inferior wall is aneurysmal here in the basal part, and akinetic in the basal part here, and this is, uh, you are talking about uh, commissural view, يعني, this is uh, a2 and the P1, B3. Uh, let us fire the color and see the character of mitral regurge because in this commissural view, it's very easy to assess the severity of mitral regurge. But it's more severe than like uh, than seen by uh, four chamber view. And as you see here, the regurge is going posteriorly towards the posterior leaflet. That means there's ischemic tethering of the posterior leaflet here because of inferior wall infarction and lead to this moderate ischemic mitral regurg, as you see here. Okay. Third, we we'll go to the lung. We finish the fibrin cava is full. In the heart, there is accepted ejection fraction, but there is ischemic mitral regurg and inferior myocardial infarction. Akinesia of the inferior wall and the inferior septum of the uh, heart. 
long B wave, bad B wave. This is probably the cause of uh, dyspnea under respiratory distress. <clears throat> this is the upper loops. Lower loops, there is pneumonia still there. Basal, this is the air bronchogram. This is the consolidation. This is the black area of the pleural effusion. Okay. This patient really, once uh, uh, stayed in the medical ward or IV fluids for a couple of days, he developed this severe dyspnea. And I, I, I prefer in this patient to look for the kidney because probably this patient is fluid intolerant. For this, you, you need to check the kidney for this old baba. As you see, the liver, this is a big cyst in the right kidney. Right kidney is small size, big cyst in the right kidney, irregular surface right kidney. Let us see in the future. You see this right kidney, small in size, it's less than nine, and this old baba will be abnormal. And as you see here, there is irregular surface, and the cortical sickness, corticomodular sickness is too, too low, and cogenic, that means it's chronic uh, kidney. There is chronic renal impairment in this patient. Left kidney, multiple small cysts, and the regular surface going with chronic kidney disease in this patient. And this is a cause of fluid intolerance for this patient besides mitral regression. Okay. Fitting the bottle together, patient has all the inferior myocardial infarction with ischemic moderate mitral regression. Recently developed community acquired pneumonia. The patient is intolerant to IV fluids because of chronic renal impairment and the mitral regurg. So he developed acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema precipitated with pneumonia and the IV fluids. And this is a real patient, really. Real patient in our in ICU, I usually see a complex patient, mixed pathology. There is too much fluids with pneumonia and the element of moderate regurg, element of mild dysfunction or moderate dysfunction lead to this picture of acute pulmonary edema. It's not one element, it's usually several elements. And this is the beauty of critical care ultrasound to clarify all the elements causing the problem. Okay, let, let us proceed. We stopped IV fluids, gave for Zumat IV, we start more adrenaline IV infusion uh, to guard against sedation due to hypotension and the patient was connected to mechanical ventilation. During uh, mechanically ventilating this patient, the borderline patient, blood pressure on the low sides, the patient in AF, the patient in uh, hypoxia, usually try to control the hemodynamics by not adrenaline for giving sedation. Uh, otherwise, the patient will collapse in, in very bad hypotension. This is very important, really. In ICU, in intubating the patient in ICU or ICU patient. Yeah. Shortly after connecting the patient to mechanical ventilation, his blood pressure dropped despite increasing noradrenaline infusion. So we repeated critical care ultrasound. This is a new insult. After connecting to mechanical ventilation, this patient dropped his blood pressure. As you see here, what, what could be the cause? We'll talk about differential diagnosis. <clears throat> this patient, uh, when connecting this patient to the mechanical post pressure ventilation, you decrease the venous return. So if this patient is in hypovolemic sites or in this patient bleed or, or in hypovolemia, you will have very bad hypotension because post pressure ventilation, post pressure ventilation decrease the venous return, which is compromised by hypovolemia. This is number one. Number two, you should exclude tension pneumothorax. Number three, the stress intubation may lead to stress-induced cardiomyopathy, which will worsen the myocardial contractility or may induce myocardial infarction and you will see new wall motion abnormality. Last but not least, post pressure ventilation is the post pressure in front of the right ventricle. And this increases the afterload of the right ventricle, which may lead to the acute corporal pulmonary, lead to dilatation and the failure of the right ventricle, which is the same wall. Okay, let us see differential diagnosis here. You need to exclude tension pneumothorax, it's very important. If there is sedation induced hypotension, you will find everything is fine. Hypovolemia, if you see the very narrow inferior vena cava and kissing the heart is going with hypovolemia, you will push fluids. Stress induced myocardial infarction and cardiomyopathy, you will see new wall motion abnormality or uh, worsening of ejection fraction and ventilator induced, ventilator induced acute corporal pulmonary, you will see ballooning of the right side after connecting to post pressure ventilation. Let us see what happened to our patient. Inferior vena cava is still not, not distensible and dilated, that means no more hypovolemia or no bleeding in this patient. We assess for sliding, there is bilateral, go, good sliding here, you see, good sliding. Good sliding here, assessing good sliding. Good sliding, so there is 
good sliding, no, no evidence of pneumothorax inspiration. Moreover, there is seashore appearance which excludes pneumothorax. No hypovolemia, no pneumothorax. Let us go to the heart to look for new one motion abnormality, worsening injection traction, or ballooning right side. This is the parasternal lung axis view. You see, start right side to increase in size, compressing the left side. Let us see for chamber view. <clears throat> oh, horrible ballooning right side it wasn't the case before mechanical ventilation, compressing the left ventricle. This is the acute core pulmonary happened with mechanical ventilation. Let us see other view in it. The mitral gauge, balloon on the right side, compressing the left side, but no wall motion abnormality of the left side, no new insult in the left side. Always with hypotension patient, you check for VTI, LVOT, VTI, because you need to see if this acute corporeal compromising the stroke volume or not. As you see here, it's very bad LVOT, VTI. It's 10, normal from 18 to 22. So, we did focal compression DVT study because we fear of uh, showering of pulmonary emboli and was done and the negative. And really to differentiate between the acute core pulmonal of the massive pulmonary embolism in this bedridden patient or acute core pulmonal because of strain of right ventricle and increase after load of right ventricle by post pressure ventilation, really look for the oxygen requirement. In acute core pulmonary mechanical ventilation, you will not find too much desaturation and oxygen increase oxygen requirement, despite the massive pulmonary embolism, you will find very bad oxygen uh, uh, requirement, very increased oxygen requirement in this patient. And for our patient, oxygen requirement didn't increase uh, uh, in this patient significantly, so we think about acute core pulmonary mechanical ventilation. We adjust the ventilator setting to decrease bilateral pressure from 32 to 26. You, you need to go as low as you can to maintain the saturation and the uh, ventilation and the least bilateral pressure you can achieve, you should achieve in this patient and repeat critical care ultrasound immediately. A couple of hours after, you will see right side now improved, not too much dilated and not compressing the left side. You can now compare between both sides. This is the first one once it, uh, connected to mechanical ventilation, and this is the after hours with adjusting the mechanical ventilation. As you see here, this is very important cause of mechanical of uh, hypotension and the acute core pulmonary. You need to consider in ICU anyone dealing with mechanical ventilation. You should consider this cause. I see this cause. In frequently in ICU, it's not too rare. It is present in ICU, but you should look for, and especially if the patient has compliant lung. If the lung is not in ERDS, the patient will be more vulnerable, uh, more uh, vulnerable to develop this acute corbal monel, uh, even with low plateau pressure, not too much high plateau pressure, even above 28, you will get this acute corbal monel. As I told you, once you correct the pathology, look for the flow, look for the stroke volume. Once we check stroke volume now increase to 14 after correcting the acute corbal monel and the patient improved really as regards the hemodynamic, we treat pneumonia and control if the patient was successfully weaned from mechanical ventilation. Thank you a lot for listening and I hope to see you uh, in another project. Bye-bye.